Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster and today we are checking out a ding wall. Let's do this. This is a Dingwall NG2, loaned to us from my friend and friend of the channel, Rick. So thanks, Rick, for letting me borrow this base. This base is an earlier model from 2016 and features the more rectangular pickups versus the more rounded ones that they have right now in the newer models. However, I do believe the construction internally is the same. Speaking of the pickups, these are Dingwall's own FD3N neodymium pickups, and in this base they are paired to a dark glass preamp. Whereas the regular combustion is paired with an EMG preamp, a three band, this uses the dark glass tone capsule. We featured the dark glass tone capsule in some of our project bases like the Kiesel RV69K as well as my Mint Array, which is a Sterling by Music Man SUB uh, with a Delano pickup as well. So those pickups had the dark glass tone capsule. So regular viewers might be familiar with what the tone capsule does in terms of its controls versus a standard preamp. But for those who aren't, the dark glass tone capsule is lacking a true treble control, which targets the 10 kHz frequency normally. This instead has a bass, low mid, and a high mid. So the high mids kind of almost encapsulate the treble a little bit, but the target is, I believe, 2.8 kHz, which is much lower and much more akin to a mid control on a standard preamp or a high mid. And then you have your low mids, which targets the 500 hertz, and then the bass control, which is 70 hertz. So this is a very different preamp from your traditional three band. Now to maximize the tonal possibilities on this bass, you have a four position rotary switch that gives you each pickup individually, as well as both pickups in series or parallel. Those are the four options there. Neck pickup, series, parallel, bridge pickup. And then you have your master volume and then your active passive or your preamp bypass switch. This is just a bypass. There is no passive tone control or anything like that in this bass. So the controls are somewhat limited, but this is a very focused instrument looking to be a metal rock, hard rock, kind of gritty bass. But let's check out the different tones that this thing has. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and push that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. So that was with just the bridge pickup soloed and the preamp bypass. So before we get into the whole dark glass tone capsule, we have the option to bypass the preamp completely and just go over the different pickup configurations so you can hear the differences. Let's do the bridge pickup soloed one more time. Next, let's move the rotary switch over one position, and we'll be running both pickups in parallel, which is a stingray-ish kind of configuration. Let's check that out. Next, we'll be running both pickups in series by turning the rotary switch one more time, and we'll be having a little bit more kick to the tone. And 
And finally, we'll be running the neck pickup soloed. So that was the four different pickup combinations that you have via this rotary switch right next to the volume knob. And then outside of that, we have the dark glass tone capsule preamp, which I just described earlier. Let's go ahead and check that out a little bit. It seems that at center there is a little bit of coloring, which is typical with most preamps. I'm going to go ahead and set the rotary switch to run both pickups in parallel, and we'll check out the preamp that way. So here is the preamp flat one more time. Now let's cut everything, see what that does. Yeah, enough of that. No one's really going to run the preamp fully cut anyways. And you see what that does. Now let's go ahead and bring the bass up to center. And now, <clears throat> now let's boost that to about 50%. As you can see, there's still a little bit of that dark glass zing, even with the treble and mids fully cut. So this preamp is definitely targeting a specific tone. Next, let's cut the bass and bring the low mids up to center. Now let's boost the low mids to about 50%. Ooh, you get plenty of growl in that low B string with this setting. And to answer that earlier question, is the B string really defined and tight and nice? Yes, it is. This is a very, very good B string. Now, I know there's a lot involved in having a very good B string, like the string construction, the bass construction, and all that other goodness. This bass and all other dingwalls that I've heard about, including my own dingwall that you guys will be seeing soon, have excellent B strings. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and cut the low mids and bring the high mids up to center. So we have the bass and low mids cut, high mids at center. <laughs> and let's boost those to about 50%. So this setting is responsible for that clank. 
Now let's start mixing things together a little bit. Keeping the high mids at about 50%, let's bring the bass up to 50% as well. <laughs> now let's bring the bass and high mids down to center and boost the low mids to about 50%. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Now, let's go ahead and center the preamp. Let's see how she slaps. <laughs> Yeah, slaps good. She slaps real good. And finally, let's go ahead and put some drums behind this bass and see what that sounds like. I'm gonna keep the preamp centered and we'll actually go through all four different pickup configurations, starting with position one, which is just the neck pickup. I'll have a little guide down below to let you know what configuration I'm in, so you'll know what's what. <laughs>
So here are my final thoughts on the Dingwall NG2 from 2016. This is an awesome base. And in terms of the upgrades that they've done for the current model, in terms of the pickup shape, those don't really make much of a difference tonally. Uh, other than that, and the carbon fiber rods that were added to the necks of these bases, I believe in 2019, uh, these are largely the same. So no real difference there. The dark glass preamp is an excellent preamp, especially for hard rock, metal, and that's the kind of tone that you get out of this. I mean, you really can't get out of that too much. This dark glass preamp is always going to color the tone in a dark glass fashion. You can never really escape that clank, you know? Um, and for an instrument at, at this price point, I, I'd wish there was a bit more flexibility, but I can see how they offer the combustion, which has an EMG preamp, and a lot more, I guess, neutral as opposed to this, which is meant to be more, I guess, hardcore. This is an awesome bass, awesome bass. I love the finishes that they have on the NG series. They've had a whole bunch of different automotive finishes from cars and motorcycles, and I just love what they're doing. However, caution to those out there who are looking to buy this base and want it to be more than it is. You can do that, don't get me wrong. That's gonna require some modification. And I actually bought an NG3, which you guys will be seeing soon. And that base has been modified heavily by myself to include a few upgrades that you don't see here. And in my opinion, these upgrades make the base even more flexible than it already is. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. These bases, as well as the combustion series, are made in China. Do they feel like they're made in China in terms of the typical instruments that we see coming out of there? Absolutely not. Sheldon and his team have selected an awesome factory out in China, and they're producing very, very excellent instruments. And I think that they do excellent quality control, and um, I mean, Dingwall has earned their reputation, rightfully so, because they're an excellent base company out of Canada. Now, Dingwall also makes the Combustion Series, which is very similar to this, except features an EMG preamp, which is a lot more neutral compared to the dark glass, which always has that dark glass zing to it that you really can't escape. Don't get me wrong, this is plenty flexible with the four different pickup combinations and the three band preamp, but you can never really escape the character of the preamp. But as I mentioned, I did buy an NG3 and I did some extensive modifications that we are gonna be checking out very soon. So keep an eye out for that video. Other than that though, the Dingwall NG2 this 2016 model is an excellent base. If you can snag one on the used market, definitely give it a shot because these dingwalls are, are something else. Again, beware though, because if you're looking for something a bit more tonally flexible for other genres outside of like metal, uh, hard rock, and, and things that really want that clank, um, you probably want to go with the regular combustion series as that features a more neutral preamp. Other than that though, this is an awesome base with awesome styling. I love the different paint jobs that the Dingwall NG series has with the automotive inspired finishes and I think they're doing a great job. So keep it up Dingwall. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Dingwall NG2. And as always, until we groove again.